Hey what's up guys, Tujin here and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing the Fostex HP A8 headphone amplifier and DAC. Now if you've seen my previous video, my previous workhorse was the Fostex HP A4 BL balanced headphone amplifier and DAC and I love that small unit altogether. Now I had the opportunity to pick this up and I really wanted to know what you get when you move up in the Fostex line. So with that being said, let's talk about the build differences. Now with this unit, the footprint is about four times as much as the A4BL, which wasn't a big issue for me because I did have the desk real estate. Um, one of the huge perks of that is that the power supply is actually integrated in this unit while the A4 had that as a, an external power supply. So cable management wise, this has a bonus. Now looking at the finish, it follows a similar theme with the A4. It's a brushed aluminum finish, except with this one you get a scratch resistant coating at the top. Um, it, and then you also get the glass finish over here. Now. The buttons are almost identical, but I can rest assured that the buttons with the A8 is actually higher quality. Now, if you saw see my A4 video, the buttons actually didn't toggle um, fully, and I had issues with the pre-outs um, cutting in and off. With this unit, that wasn't an issue at all. Now, one of the big reasons why this unit is bigger is because it has a Toriel transformer and that requires a lot of space. The perks of that though, is that you get less uh, noise floor, better efficiency, and less interference, which should translate to a better sound. Now, with that all being said, let's transition to the functionality because this unit has a lot more than the A4. One of the biggest things that you get convenience wise and functionality wise with the A A8 is this remote. Now this is really convenient and handy to have because when you're using this as a preamp you can adjust the volume, access the menu and the inputs, but without this you're screwed. Let me explain why. Without this remote you basically have to use this knob and this button to toggle through menus, inputs, filters, through the OL. OLED display and it's a pain in the ass but with the remote it's just a simple push of a button and with these arrow keys you're able to navigate without a problem. So with more functionality you're also getting filters, super sampling and you're also getting um, a DAC and uh, pass-through option. So you can use this as a preamp, but in case you don't want to use the preamp and you don't want this volume knob to affect, you know, whatever external amplifier or, you know, unit that you're power um, giving signal to, you can actually turn off the uh, or bypass the volume knob and use it as a straight DAC instead of a preamp. Along with that, with super sampling, Fostex integrated a two times and a four times uh, super sampling option, which I personally thought was not that great of an impl implementation at all because what it did do was it introduced artifacts to the music. Now with the A4 there was no super sampling uh, option but there was a gain option with a high gain and a low gain. With this unit you get more precision in that gain and what I mean by that is that you start at a negative 12 dB gain and you move up by 0.5 uh, decibel intervals to match the impedance of your headphones or the power requirement of the headphones. Another huge difference with the functionality is that you're getting two quarter inch headphone outs and this amp can power two headphones at once. It was able to push out a lot of power with most of the headphones I threw at it and then as a preamp it was able to give a nice quality signal to my ship VIDAR that powered my speakers. Now, that's great all in all, but how does it sound?
this is where I get disappointed because sure it provides you know excellent power and the output is just insane but the DAC is where things go south so from the HP A4BL you're getting a Burr Brown DAC and it came off more neutral and you know refined with this you are getting some clean power but the AK4399 chip in this unit in combination with the the amplification that's going inside it provided a sound that honestly made everything I connected to a tad more bright which is a good thing and a bad thing when it really comes down to the pairing so let me start with my first headphone that I mostly use the Haifa Manorias now these headphones are known to be laid back, but a full bodied sound. With this unit, it became more reference, not sibilant, but not, it's losing the characteristic that you, it's known for. It almost sounds like HD 800s. So moving on with HD 800s that are known to be analytical headphones in general, with this amp paired to it, it became apparent, especially when I started cranking the volume up, to be bright as a combination, which isn't necessarily a bad thing in nature. Um, with the ZMF Aeolus, this was, it was pleasurable to listen to the combination with this amp and that headphone in particular, especially with the ZMF being a more fun sound with a more of a recessed treble. Now, you'll know more about the ZMF in the actual review coming up, but with that being said, I did enjoy that combination. Now, finally, there was one more headphone that I tried with this amplifier, and it was a very short experience because it was unbearable. And that was with the Focal Elix. The moment I put them on, I took them off. And that was the end of that. Now, with that all being said, with the preamp output, um, I did find this unit in particular to work well with my Kef R100s, especially when powered with the Ship Vidar amp that I have. Um, that speaker in general is a very forgiving and laid back speaker. And when paired with this as a preamp, it just overall made the sound a bit more full bodied and more all round, all rounding. So I enjoy this unit for that use and it's probably why I'm gonna keep this amplifier. Now with the pairings I've mentioned, what I've noticed is that this amp does, or this unit, has a treble tilt. Now with the bass response, it's nice and tight with really good extension. Now really when it comes down to concluding this review, you know, you can have some really great experiences with this amp and horrible ones like I had with the Elex. But with that being said, I'm sure there's a use case for this amp and it really, yeah, it does come down to pairing. All right, guys, so if you liked the video, make sure to like, and if you haven't subscribed, please do. And I'll be hanging out in the comments section, so if you have any questions, please do ask, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.